Uh, Psalms chapter 133, verse number 1. Then I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 1 through 4 there. Uh, first of all, Psalms 133 and verse number 1. And as you turn there, amen, just a quick announcement. It, it, uh, next Thursday, we'll start revival with Brother per, uh, Victor Persinger will be preaching for us for uh, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And uh, it just kind of felt led to uh, do a prayer revival, uh, start prayer revival on Tuesdays. This will be Tuesday and Wednesday anyways. On Tuesday and Wednesday, through prayer revival before, uh, before Brother Persinger comes, amen, that we be seeking God for, uh, for a, move, a move from Him. So you know, that's what I uh, felt led to do. So that's what we will do. Uh, Lord willing, uh, unless there's a lot of you know a lot of visitors in the house and lost uh, there's those sinners in the house. So you know we uh, if the Lord leads, we may preach a little bit, but uh, we're going to plan on just having prayer revival on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. So this, uh, just a quick announcement. But Psalms 133, verse number one, it says, "Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity." Amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter four, verse number one. Ephesians 4 and 1, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherein you are called with all loving, loving, uh, lowliness and meekness and longsuffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavor, uh, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in, uh, in one hope of your calling. If you would just pray with me, Lord. I thank You for bringing us here, Lord. Lord, I ask You to anoint me, God, for without Your anointing, I can do nothing, God. But by that anointing, all things are possible. God, speak as only You can do in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated tonight. Amen. I'm just going to talk to you tonight on unity. Amen. I know I preached on unity. Amen. Or right along these lines before. Amen. But as, I, as I've been preaching on earnestly contending for the faith and guarding our souls. Amen. I just felt led uh, just a few days ago. Amen. Just is thinking about this to preach on unity in this. Amen. If we're going to make it in this walk with God, we're going to, we need each other. If we're not going to be in them, that fall away if we're going to be of them that still stay living for God and not fall into apostasy. It's going to be by, uh, by relying first of all on Christ. But amen. But we must rely on each other. We must be accountable to each other. If you're going to make it in God it's going to be by accountability. Amen. As we walk in this last day. Amen. We must walk in unity with each other. We need each other to make it in this walk with God. We must have each other or we will fall away. Amen. The Bible says, forsake not the simply of yourselves together even so much more as you see the day approaching. Why does He say forsake not the assemblies of yourselves together and much more as you see the day approaching? Why? Because in the more the closer we get to the coming of Christ, the more we need each other to make it unto the end. Amen. The more, the more, the closer I can go to heaven, the more I need the church. Amen. Make no mistake about it. That we need each other. Amen. I thought I was, people said it was in the Bible. I was always unsure what in the Bible. But amen. Some somebody said once though. Amen. I looked it up and somebody said it once. I can't remember who it was. But no man is an island unto themselves. Amen. No man is an island to themselves. We all need each other to make it. Amen. If we're going to make it in this walk with God, God put a church in place that we be accountable to each other that we can make it unto the end. Yes, amen. amen. So, I, I, that's my desire to make it unto the end. So I'm going to talk to you tonight about how if we walk in unity. Being in unity with each other. Being in unity of them of like precious faith. Amen. If, we, if we're walking with God together, oh Obeying the Bible, doing what Jesus said, and, ha- and are truly born again, we should walk in unity Amen. together. Amen. 
Amen. So if we're in, this is way what it's going to take to make it in this walk with God is each other. Amen. First of all, we know our unity must be with Christ. Amen. We must rely on Christ in Him first and foremost. But Christ put also an order, as Brother Trevor talked about, an order earlier. I'm going to tell you, God made an order in this walk with God. God made an order to make it unto the end. And this order is that we rely on each other as Christians. Amen. Amen. We must be able to rely on each other. Yes. Amen. We must, uh, we must uh, be able to look to each other to help us to pray. Amen. To help us to make it unto the end. Romans 12 and uh, 12, yeah, Romans 12, 3 to 21 talk about unity. It says, Amen. It says, For I say though, the grace given unto me for to every man that is among you, not to, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but uh, but to think soberly, according to God's uh, God uh, uh, according as God hath dealt with every man of a measure of faith. For we have uh, many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we, being many, are uh, are one body in Christ, and every one member uh, one of another. Amen. And it goes on down to talk about unity. But I'm going to tell you, is we are one body, but made up of many members. We are all the wall work as the body works in unison. Amen. This body works in unison. And as this body works in unison, us as a church must work in unison with each other. Amen. As you, get, as, you, as you get injured, amen, you have a cut, you reach and grab for your cut. Amen. Your hand reaches and grab for your cut. Amen. To help that. I'm going to tell you, is that is, we must be that way with the church. When we see our brother and sister in trouble, we must get on our knees and seek the face of God. We must go to them in help in one to another. If you're going to make it to the end, you must rely on each each other. Yes. Amen. As I said earlier, we must be able to rely on each other. Amen. I should be able to look at anybody. Amen. Is truly born again for help. Amen. Amen. Keep your life right that you can be a help to somebody else. I'm going to tell you, we are required to be a help to each other in this walk with God. It is, it, is, uh, it is a requirement. The Bible says in Galatians 6 and 2, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. Don't say, amen, to, to two things. Don't say, uh, don't say, I don't want anybody in my business. Amen. Uh, they, I, don't want, uh, they, uh, they, I don't want them to do. Sure, there's things private in your life. Amen. I'm not saying that. That there's not some things private that sometimes it's between a husband and a wife. Amen or sometimes things just keep you between you and God. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, if you're fighting, don't say, amen. If somebody says, I'm praying for you, don't tell them to mind their own business. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If we do, if we would do that, it's something wrong. And also, don't say, I don't want to get in their business and I don't want to pray for them. I'm going to tell you, if you see your brother and sister struggle, you have a requirement to seek God for them. You have a requirement to bear their burdens. It is a it is a it is a commandment in the scripture. I don't believe this is an option, but a commandment that we bear one another's burdens. It is a commandment that for me and for you to help our brother make it unto the end. Amen. Amen. Sure, I, amen. Though without a doubt, I cannot make anybody live for God. Amen. If I can make anybody live for God, everybody live for God, we would have a lot more people living for God on these church pews than we do. But I can't make anybody live for God. But I sure can pray and seek the face of God for you that you live for God. Amen. 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 There ain't a day go by, amen, that I, if I see somebody struggling, I'm on my face crying out to God for you. Why? Because it is a requirement and it is a commandment for me to do such a thing. Yes. 
Amen. Amen. We'll get to more to praying one for another here in a moment. Amen. And maybe some more Sunday night. Amen. They will talk more along the lines and kind of focus more on pray, uh, prayer. Amen. Sunday night. Amen. But amen. We must bear one another's burdens. Amen. It is also a commandment for us to love one another. We are as Christians to love each other. Amen. No matter how aggravating somebody is, no matter how much you don't want to love someone, no matter how much bad somebody's done to you, we must love one another. Amen. 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 It is a commandment. Amen. He said in the first John somewhere, I, I have it here in my notes somewhere. Amen. And this commandment we have from him that we love that, that he that who loveth uh, God love his brother also. It is a commandment that we love each other. Amen. If we don't love each other, amen. We know we have a problem loving God. Amen. But we must love our neighbor as ourselves. I want the best. Amen. Sure, we want the best for our lives. Amen. And we should want the best for my brothers and sisters' lives. I don't want to make it to heaven and I don't want to make it to heaven alone. I want you to go with me when I go. Amen. Regardless if you go, sure, I'm going to go. Amen. Regardless if everybody quits, I must have a made up mind that I'm going to make it. But I'm not content and let people backslide. I want somebody to go to heaven with me when I go. Amen. Amen. So we must love our neighbor as ourselves. Matthew twenty two thirty nine. And the second is like unto this. He they asked what the greatest commandment, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, and all that is within you. Amen. The second is like unto this to love thy neighbor as thyself. He said the second greatest commandment is to love each other. Amen. The first greatest commandment amen, is to love Jesus. Amen. But if we love Jesus, we're not going to have a problem. Loving each other. Amen. Amen. Colossians 3 and 14. Amen. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of of perfectness. Amen. It is a bond of perfectness for brothers and sisters in Christ to love each other. Amen. amen. Philippians, amen. Two, uh, two. Fulfill ye my joy, and uh, uh, that ye be like minded, have the sa- and having the same love, being in one cord of one mind. Amen. That we have love for each other, being in one mind in one accord. Amen. If we're gonna, th- we must think as a as a collective. Amen. But we must love each other in this, or we're not truly in one mind in one accord. Amen. Amen. And if we don't love each other, we don't love God. Amen. You say, well, I love God, but I don't love this person. Amen. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says if you have a problem loving your brother, you have a problem loving God. First John 4 and 20 through 21. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth his brother, not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Amen. I read this to you all. Go. And this commandment we have from him that we, uh, uh, that he who loveth God, uh, God, uh, uh, he that loveth God, love his brother also. Amen. If we have love God, we're not going to have a problem loving our brother also. As I've told you before, amen, love does not mean tolerance. Amen. Just because we rebuke somebody doesn't mean we love, don't love them. But I'm going to tell you, if I love you, I must pray for you and tell you the truth. The Bible says, amen, open rebuke is better than secret love. Amen. So true love tells people when they're wrong. Amen. Amen. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not wrong for me to tell you wrong, but I must speak the truth in love. Amen. If I'm not speaking the truth in love, it's because I, man, something is truly wrong in my heart. Amen. And I don't love God. Amen. And love my brother as I should. Amen. Amen. Now to our flesh, amen, speaking the truth is not going to look like love, but the Holy Ghost knows when it is love. Amen. I'm going to tell you, amen. Every time that I, every time that I haven't spoke the truth in love, that Holy Ghost has reproved me. Amen. And I've had to go back and tell people that I was wrong. 
Amen. I had to repent to God. Amen. And repent to the person. Amen. We must speak the truth in love. Amen. But we must be willing to tell people when they're wrong. That is true love. The epitome of true love is to tell somebody. Amen. Warn somebody of their sins. They tell me on the streets all the time, this is not love. Amen. Love. Amen. Oh, love. Oh, love. Amen. Is, uh, is tolerant. Amen. Love is not tolerant. God is not tolerant of sin. The Bible spoke of God, of Jesus, that He hated sin and loved righteousness. Amen. Did God love us when He rebukes us and chastens us every single time? For He said in Revelation 3.19, those that I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Amen. Amen. I do believe we should follow the pattern of Christ. Amen. That we should tell the truth when we love someone. But if we love someone, amen, we must do it in love. Amen. So, amen, as Christians, amen, we should love each other. Amen. This is a requirement to make it in this walk with God. If we're going to make it living for God, it's going to be by loving one another. Amen. If we love one another, we're going to pray for people, for each other. We're going to tell each other the truth. We're going to help each other. Amen. Now, I do know there's an order, amen, in rebuke. So, amen, God, amen, placed authority for rebuke. Amen. Not everybody, amen, should be rebuking, if, especially as an elder. Amen. You should never rebuke an elder. Amen. Accept doing it the biblical pattern. Amen. Be very careful ever to rebuke an elder. Sure, if I'm in adultery, you tell me I'm wrong. Amen. But Beware, amen, and be uh, be careful how you do so, amen, because there's a bit there's a biblical pattern for it, amen. But if you love me enough, amen, you better be praying for me, amen. You better go to an elder and talk to them about my sin if I'm in sin, amen, because I don't want to live in sin, amen, amen. I want to I want to be living right for God, amen, and I want somebody to love me enough if I if I stray to the side, amen, for somebody to warn me of my sin, amen. Amen. As Christians in unity, we must forgive one another. Amen. Matthew six fourteen and fifteen. It says, um, it says, for, uh, for if we, uh, will, uh, for if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you of your trespass. Uh, uh, forgive you, uh, forgive your trespasses. Matthew seven and twelve. Therefore, all things what. Whatsoever you do, uh, that men should do to you. Amen. Do even uh, even so to them. E, uh, for this is the law uh, 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 and the prophets. I want to tell you, if we want somebody to do something for good, if we want somebody to forgive us, we should be forgiving to others. Amen. Now you say, well, you don't understand how that person's treated me. Amen. Well, God knows. Amen. He, amen. He knows how people's treated him. Amen. Look at Stephen. Amen. As he's being stoned. My dad brought Stephen to the other day in Sunday school. Look at Stephen as he was being stoned. He said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Amen. If it would look like somebody would have a reason to be unforgiving, to hold bitterness, it would look like Stephen had a reason to hold bitterness. But I'm going to tell you, he said, God, Lay not this sin to their charge. Yes. Amen. Look at Jesus when He was hanging on the cross. He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Right. Amen. Definitely, if it would look for somebody, amen, somebody would have a reason to be unseen when it would seem that somebody had a reason to be unforgiven. It would be Jesus. He knows the hearts of all men. He knows how wicked their hearts truly is. He knows what's in them. He knows what's going to happen in the future. Amen. He knows all. Amen. So it would be definitely, yeah. amen, Jesus would seem to have a reason. But I want to tell you, Amen. Amen. He still said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. We should be forgiving of one another. Amen. If we want to be forgiving of God, we must forgive one another. If we want our brothers and sisters to forgive us when we've done them wrong, we must be forgiven. Uh, uh, forgive, we must forgive when we do wrong. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. We must pray for one another. James 5.16 Confess your faults one to another. Amen. Pray one for another and yet that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. That we confess our faults. Amen. And pray one for another. Amen. We must pray one for another as Christians that we may be healed. I'm going to tell you if we, if we if it's going to, things between us is going to be healed. Amen. Things or we're going to walk in perfect unity. It's going to be through prayer. Amen. We must pray one for another. Amen. Beware of walking in disunity. Amen. Beware of disunity coming about. Amen. Us as Christ, uh, we as Christians should be walking in unity, as I said. But if we, man, if we let uh, we let things coming our way, Amen. The way we feel, Amen. Uh, amen. Let the enemy come in because the enemy would love to come in and tear apart our unity. That's what the devil wants to do. The devil don't want us to make it unto the end. The devil wants us to fail. The devil wants us to go quit along the way. And he knows we need each other to make it unto the end. Amen. That's why God made a church. To, uh, amen. To help one another. Amen. He knew that we needed each other to make it unto the end. So God established a people to come together and seek His face. Amen. And be accountable with each other. And the devil hates that. The devil hates unity. Amen. So he would to destroy this. Beware of letting this unity come in through what we're so what we say. We should always be careful in what we say and how we say it. Amen. That we not walk in disunity. Amen. The, that the enemy would love to come tear us apart. We must be careful in the way we think. Sometimes we think that people are angry with us when they're not truly angry with us. We think that people have something against us when we they, they really don't. Amen. We must be well, we must be, amen, have discernment. And not only that, not uh, amen. Pray for them and love them, even if you feel like they have something against you. Amen. And go to them and amen and tell them if I've done anything wrong, I apologize. Amen. That's the hardest thing a Christian can ever do to go to somebody and say, if I've done something, amen, I'm sorry. That's the hardest thing for a man to do. Amen. But we must do this as Christians if we're going to make it unto the end. Amen. Amen. We must be where, amen, who we have unity with. Amen. We can't just have unity with anybody. Amen. But we must have unity with the right people. Amen. The Bible teaches us in the first, uh, 2 Corinthians 6, amen, to be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness, what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel. And it goes on down. Amen. It warns us not to have unity with just anybody. The Bible teaches know them that labor among you. We must know who we have unity with. Sure, amen, as I've told you often, we cannot have unity with the Catholic Church and never could have unity with the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church has been wrong ever since its conception. It's never been right and we cannot walk in unity with it. Amen. They must come out from among them and be separate. Amen. But we must have unity with the right people. Amen. The last thing is unity will bring revival. Amen. When they was on the day of Pentecost, it says they were one place in one accord uh, in one accord in one place. Amen. If we want to see true revival, we want to see our loved ones saved, amen, it's going to come through the unity of the church. Amen. If we're unified as a church then seek the face of God. Amen. And I, I hope to talk about this a little bit more Sunday. Amen. Amen. But amen, if we're unified as a church, amen, and we seek the face of God together, we're going to see, amen, I do believe we'll see the outpouring of Pentecost one more time. Amen. But it's going to be by a unified church, amen, it's unified, a uni, a, 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 amen, in unity, seeking His face. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Amen.